Nobody wants to hear that living and traveling on board a sailboat, which seems very uh, dreamy as a way to live life, right? But a lot of time, YouTube sailing sells escapism. And so if you are into escapism, this is not going to be a video for you. But I have a feeling that since you're here, you want to hear the honest truth, plural. And so uh, stay tuned for that. Hello and welcome or welcome back to eSport where we are uh, still preparing Polar Steel to uh, move back on board and uh, yeah. This week I was really excited to bring you a video about how we make Polar Steel ready uh, for liveaboard sailing. And in the process we've hit some pretty harsh realities of what it's like to live and travel on a sailboat. And so two years ago I made this video about all the things I wish somebody had told me before moving on board. You guys seem to really enjoy it and so I thought this is a great opportunity to do a follow-up. So today I thought that I would tell you all the things that nobody really talks about, you know, when it comes to this lifestyle. The harsh realities, the harsh truth. After six years of living and uh, traveling the world on board Polar Steel, well, uh, we've hit quite a few of them, especially right now. Yeah. But if you've been subscribing to our channel for a while, you know that uh, we don't really hide that stuff. Uh, also, if you're not subscribed, what are you doing? Hit the subscribe button. We're having a lot of fun here. Okay, so Ryan is at Home Depot and West Marine with Barnacle. They're getting a few supplies for us to fix some of the problems that we're having. And in the meantime, let's talk. And before we start, a little bit of a disclaimer. Not everybody is going to have the same experiences. There is not one right way or wrong way to live this life. Uh, I am just here to tell you about, uh, about what, what we've found. So yeah, I'm hoping that by telling you about our experiences, you can maybe make better choices or different choices, or maybe it gives you food for thoughts. Uh, those are not uh, realities that are set in stone for everyone, okay? Just wanted to put it out there. Okay, so the first harsh reality of living and traveling on board a style boat is that you can either have a plan or you can be happy. If you are really lucky, you can have both. But most of the time, not so much. The first year that Ryan and I were on the water, we sailed between Stockholm down to the Mediterranean and we made it according to the plan, but we also were really stressed and really kind of miserable. The second year, we tried to make it a lot easier on ourselves and we abandoned the idea of having a very defined plan, but we invited friends and family on board. And so that created a schedule for us because we needed to go pick up our friends and our family in defined places at defined times. And so we had to go, we had to be there on time. On our third season, we sailed from Europe across the Atlantic to the Caribbean, and we had a glorious month of tropical sailing until we found a global yeah. pandemic. COVID became the plan. We didn't have choice. We were navigating around a set of circumstances. And so this year is the first year that we do not have to do that. The idea that you can sail wherever the wind takes you is skewed, unless you look at the wind as a metaphorical concept, because there has been plenty of times that multiple factors have come in the way of our sailing ambitions. This year, it is the delay in our projects. It's not the first time that it happens, but it's always as difficult to predict a delay and why you will have a delay and the length of the delay. Our ambition this year was to sail up to New York, take the Erie Canal, go into Lake Ontario and sail all along the St. Lawrence River to go down to Nova Scotia and back to Annapolis, hopefully before the boat show. It is not going to happen. For that plan to have happened, we would have needed to be in New York right now and we haven't even moved back on board. Instead, what we'll do is to take it easy in the Chesapeake Bay for a couple of weeks, enjoy the friendships that we have here, make sure that the boat is in actual good shape to be sailed north. Then we'll shoot to Nova Scotia as fast as we possibly can, enjoy a great summer here, and take it slower down the East Coast uh, in August and September, back to Annapolis, right in time for the boat show. Because we have five years of sailing life experience, we understood when we made a plan to go up the St. Lawrence River that there was a chance that it may not happen. Sailing plans are written in the sand at low tide and between having a plan and being happy, we'll always choose being happy. And talking about plans, our current uh, delay is uh, our shower and our toilet. How's it going, Ryan? 
Uh, it's going good. I just, uh, we, well, it's not going good. So the water's in the toilet. It won't drain, which means there's a clog in the pipe somewhere. Uh, so we need to get the water out of the toilet, which we've done twice now. And I need to disconnect the drains and see what's in there. It's going to be a fun day. And then clean everything up afterwards and then reassemble it all. When I installed our new toilet, we had to create a connection between a smaller size pipe and our current shit pipe. And through that process, we removed a lot of the calcification that was in our old pipe because urine interacts with raw water and creates a calcification on your pipe. And so on occasion, you need to clean out that pipe. We thought that we had cleaned out the pipe good, but apparently not enough. We think that the clog comes from uh, the calcification crumbling and falling in the pipe. That created a leak. <sighs> and now we have sewage in the belch. Where is this going? Oh, oh, uh, yeah. Okay, it's going in the belch. It's all clean water though. Oh, kind of. What that do you mean, kind of? smells really bad. Oh, 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 wow. Was that in the pipe? Some of it. Even Barnacle is distraught by the smell, Ryan. It's about to get a lot worse, so. No way. Okay, this situation gives me the smoothest transition to tell you about my second harsh truth about uh, what it's like to live on board a sailboat, which is that uh, you are living in a constant state of problem solving and decision making. Always. There is no break. You're always looking at the weather, asking yourself if you should go or not go. Um, you're constantly trying to figure out something that is wrong with the boat or trying to adjust your plan to ever-changing circumstances, etc, etc, etc. And that can be mentally very demanding. Very demanding. And it's not only mentally demanding, it's also very physically. So for the last couple of months, Ryan has been doing a lot of work on the boat. And uh, I mean, look, look at that. The body constantly has to adjust to very cramped space. Uh, and uh, when you have to do boat work in uh, very tight spaces, we call it boat yoga. And uh, yoga is very rewarding of an activity, of a hobby. Boat yoga breaks you. This is just completely clogged up with the calcified shit. So. God damn it. Today, everybody is taking their boat out for Memorial Weekend, and I am uh, banging my shit pipe. How are we doing? Not well. Not well? No, there was a lot more in there than that. Hey, hey. It's a uh, Memorial Day weekend and I'm uh, wiping sewage off the bilge. For anyone who's never seen it before, this is our waste tank. And right now, Ryan is reconnecting the waste pipe to the waste tank. Well, the boat's getting closer to being done. We got a new shower pan in, but the drill holes don't line up, so we had to put some epoxy in, so we can't get that done today. But tomorrow, uh, we need to get all the sails up and kind of clean the boat a little bit, and then we can move everything on the boat, which is also a process in itself. Okay, so this afternoon, the plan is for us to repair the shower. It's not really repaired. We're replacing the shower pan, which uh, desperately needed a change. And then I think we should be done with boat work, Ryan. Is that right? Is that the correct assessment? Uh, we need to run a line up the mast, hopefully. And we need to get the sails up. Yeah, but we can technically get the sails up. Yeah. While we're, we leave. We're also board. waiting for a exhaust pipe that was ordered, but I have no idea what the status of it is. Okay, we're getting there. Okay, so Ryan, what is a harsh reality of living and traveling on the sailboat? Things take twice as long as you think they will, so that's the sailing and the working and the fixing, 
and cost three times as much. I think that I would have over the years gotten used to this and maybe accounted for it, but here we are a number of weeks late from leaving and I still don't know how we got here and realize we still have a lot to do. I think that your level of acceptance is much, much higher though. Uh, maybe on the outside. <laughs> Barnacle is enjoying air from the train school. Do you want a little bit? Oh yes. Oh, that feels good, huh? Oh yeah. Should we go take a little nap? Okay, so we are back at the boat. One of the last projects that we are doing, the last piece of the refit, uh, is that we are installing a Raymarine camera that will allow us to see what's around us in augmented reality uh, on the chart plotter. And we are installing it, so right now it's not exactly how it's gonna look, but... Okay, so right now Ryan is uh, up the mast and he is trying to install the camera in a way that's gonna make it straight. But uh, already you can see some uh, AIS data. Uh, with um, you know the names of the boats. So for example, here we have Silver Girl. Here we have Orca, who apparently we're on a collision on a collision course with. But it's uh, it's super promising. I'm excited to see that in uh, real life. <laughs> Are we becoming a sailboat again? Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Team, you ready? Let's do this. Oh, that furler needs some grease. There we go. Okay, so here is another harsh reality about living and traveling from a sailboat, and it is that it can be quite isolating of a lifestyle. Now, let me explain. When you cruise, especially in places like the Caribbean, you make so many friends from everywhere around the world who you create deep connections with very, very quickly. Uh, but just as fast that you've made friends, you will say goodbye. After five years of cruising, Ron and I have made friends everywhere in the world, from everywhere in the world, from every walk of life, and it's been extremely rewarding. But when we do... Uh, oof, <laughs> I'm falling in the bilge. But when you are cruising in remote places and your social circle changes every week or so, your core support system, such as your family or your close friends, they are not here. And sometimes there are moments when you're really tired, this mentally and physically demanding lifestyle is hitting you a little bit harder than normal. And in those moments, it can be hard sometimes not to have those people around you. And yes, of course, you can call, but it's not really the same. And on top of it, because you are with your partner 24 seven, it, it can be hard sometimes to find an escape with your own people, you know, people that are not your partner. I could also talk about the realities of sailing the world as a couple and the impact that it has on the relationship, but that's probably the topic of an entirely different video. So we're gonna keep it for another time if you guys are interested. So yeah, one thing that I am missing when I'm sailing in remote places is the sense of having a community somewhere. And I know that the sailing community is great, it's fantastic, I love it, uh, meeting people everywhere in the world, but I like to have, you know, my people. Uh, and it's something that we found here in Annapolis and it's been great. Okay, so we are gonna lock the boat, say goodbye to Policeal for today. I think that we've made good progress. Uh, we don't have sewage in the bilge anymore, which uh, definitely a win. Hopefully we can move in in the coming few days, uh, but yeah. And on the topic of having access to your support system, uh, your network and your community of close family and friends, one thing that can be difficult when you live and travel the world on a sailboat is access to mental health care. And I'm going to talk to you about it, but Ryan is waiting for me in the car. So I'll probably do that when I'm home. Okay. Okay, so you may be watching this video being like, oh great, here comes another ad for And it's not going to be the case because Ryan and I have tried and uh, that was a terrible experience. That terrible experience sent me down a rabbit hole of researching 
and uh, I invite you to Google uh, plus horror stories, especially here on YouTube. It's, uh, wow, there, it's a lot. Therapy is expensive. And uh, when I tried, I had to front a couple of hundred bucks for a few sessions at once. I'm like, well, okay, well, whatever. I booked with a therapist, that therapist canceled on me. With the second therapist that I booked with, I received a dot as a conversation. And through my rabbit hole, I realized that uh, this platform kind of forces therapists to uh, get in touch with you very fast. But a lot of times they don't really have the time to get back to you as fast as possible. And so they will send you a dot. Yay. So I know that the whole of YouTube is uh, trying to sell the idea that uh, online therapy can be super accessible and uh, really affordable from anywhere. But the reality is that it's actually really difficult to find a therapist when you live a nomadic lifestyle, especially if you're an English speaker and you want to go to therapy with somebody who speaks English, because then you're going to be looking at a therapist in the United States. They are licensed by state. And so it can be complicated to find a therapist that can accompany you as you travel the world. And that is an issue that Ryan and I have stumbled upon. Now, since we arrived here in Annapolis, I am seeing a therapist who is amazing. She is great. Uh, she's really helped me process a lot of the experiences that I've had in the last three years. Ryan and I have found a really great couple counselor who is also helping us navigating some life transitions. Uh, but let me tell you, it was not easy to find them. We definitely not found them through a... <laughs> it's a friend and patron of ours who is a therapist herself who helped us uh, find those people. And uh, we are eternally grateful for um, the help that we received in finding a good therapist to work with. Bad therapists exist. I I've had those experiences and it's even harder to find good ones when you live a nomadic lifestyle. I know that a lot of you will watch this and it's not gonna feel relevant to you because maybe you do not feel that you need to go to therapy. Maybe you're like me and Ryan and you live with some kind of an anxiety disorder or chronic depression and you know that you need to have tools and resources when you go out and travel. And in 2018, when we made the decision to depart, it was important for me to continue having access to therapy uh, as we left, and I found it to be quite hard. I know that it's important to talk about mental health and especially on platforms like YouTube, but I'm also dreading the comment section right now. <laughs> so obviously it's been a long day. Mm -hmm. It's been a long few weeks. Mm -hmm. We've been working a lot. Mm -hmm. What is it that draws you back to the boat and, <laughs> and, and this lifestyle that is clearly having a great effect on you right now? That is a good question. I'm not sure I can answer that. I, I like being on the water and seeing new places. I just want to go so we can do that. It's fun to be living on the boat. It's a different lifestyle that I really enjoy. Then I like taking my home to other places on the water to see those other places. So like the Chesapeake and then going up north to Maine and Canada. It's, I'm really excited about it, but this has been a lot of work and I'm very tired. Living and traveling on a sailboat is like a very uh, high cost, high reward type of activity. And it's like that reward of reaching a new place from the water that's uh, pretty addictive. How do we make it sustainable for us to continue doing this? Yeah, uh, no, we try to eat well. We try to make sure we have time with our friends, uh, like social time. Try to make sure we still have like movie nights and TV nights um, and try to keep the pace manageable. I think that another way that we make this lifestyle sustainable for us is that we are not 100% reliant on YouTube for our income. That's right. I know that by having this channel, I perpetuate the idea that uh, YouTube is a viable way to make an income when you travel the world. And it is for very few people. Our YouTube channel essentially pays for itself. But uh, I think that if we didn't have uh, your job, your income, and my consultancy, it would be very difficult to uh, continue to live this. And, uh, you know, I, I think about a lot of friends 
who have a YouTube channel that is successful, for whom it is their primary source of income for both partners. And it's a very, very stressful life. They're always constantly on the go, constantly making decisions, constantly filming, constantly editing. And it's, I could not be doing that. <laughs> Another way that we make this lifestyle sustainable for us and keep it fresh is by taking breaks on land. So we've been in Iowa over the winter this year and uh, we have been in Annapolis for two months living in a house while we, yeah, three. Three? Oh yeah. We have been living on land while we refit the boat because the boat is not habitable at the moment. That's another truth about living on the sailboat. It's that there are very few people that permanently live and travel on their sailboat. Most people that we know they take breaks on occasion, like a couple of months a year. It's healthy, it keeps it fresh. Anyways, I would be super interested to hear what are your untold truths about what it's like to live and travel on the sailboat. For those of you who have experience, we'd love to hear it in the comment section. And uh, thank you for having watched this video, which I imagine is going to be a bit long this week. It was a long week for Ryan too. It's not done yet. Do you want to say goodbye, Ryan? Bye guys. Bye bye. Ryan needs to go to bed because tomorrow we're doing it again.